Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. On Thursday, November 23rd, Thanksgiving evening, 11.37 p.m., 2017 Mountain Time, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update. We're joined with our friend Albedo. You're looking at the current Thanksgiving Albedo map, November 23rd, and it is showing large swaths of snow penetrating into Eurasia between 60 and 30 degrees, especially 45 and 30. Central Russia. We are officially four weeks out from winter. Uh, the ice growth If we come here, this is quite telling. They stopped the graph at October 3rd. <laughs> because if you look over here, and they say there'll be no more graft until next March. You'll see here, this is the three-day Northern Hemisphere ice mean. This is the maximum light blue, the 10-year average. And this is the 2017 data. And you can see it's way above the 10-year average mid-September. And almost at the 10-year max. They don't want to go past here because if you remember in our Albino report a few days ago, the amount of ice that grew out of these bays, yeah. So that's probably why they stopped giving us data here. I'll leave you links to all of this obfuscation. But there is a heck of a lot of Arctic ice four weeks from winter. Don't let anyone tell you anything else. Let's talk about cosmic ray flux, record-breaking British Columbia weather, the latest in a series of extreme events. We've been reporting on British Columbia getting hit with continuous massive snow events and now atmospheric rivers. The Pineapple Express that brought record-breaking warm temperatures and torrential rain to the B.C. coast Wednesday is the latest in a string of extreme weather events that characterize 2017, the grand solar minimum in general, cosmic ray flux, increased cloud nucleation, and atmospheric rivers as the norm. And if you go on to read this, it's only going to get worse. I mean, they're talking temperature swings between 35 and 15 degrees. <laughs> it's crazy. How about you, Scotland? Snow hit Scotland. It's a winter wonderland. I don't have a really good Scottish accent for you this evening, but look at all the snow. Thank you for driving with care. It's glorious in Scotland this time of year. For all those you Scots that missed the snow... There's more coming. This is just the beginning. We call this mid-fall Scottish snow. It's a wee bit white out there, isn't it? Mm. Be a great postcard. I'll just let these run. So if you're in the south, you don't have any of this. But Scotland is bracing itself... For four inches of snow, as forecasters warn of further weather chaos, families have been forced to flee their homes after flooding caused chaos across England last night, with 70 people needing rescue in North Lancashire. It comes as forecasters warn of more heavy rain and snow as a bitter polar blast prepares to sweep the country this weekend. Heads up! Snow to hit Scotland tonight as block of bitter cold air plunges through the UK. Now, rain is set to continue to cause havoc, while experts predict heavy snow and sleet will blanket areas of northern Scotland on Saturday, with up to four inches set to fall in some places. Biting northern and northwesterly winds will transport freezing air from the Arctic, meaning temperatures will drop dramatically and cars will be parked in ponds. Hello! 
Fears of a huge earthquake after 100 mini tremors. Thank God they finally downgraded their big earthquake at 4.6 to a mini tremor. So guys, there are uh, articles coming out all over today about this as being four shocks to a larger quake. And they're about due all over. San Andreas, Northern California, <coughs> the Cascadia Fault Zone, etc. Heads up. Let's do a seismic update. Quakes of note today. Here we had a Japan 5.5 five at 10 kilometers in the middle of nowhere. Probably affected no one. This Chinese quake probably raised some eyebrows here at a 5.1. And South Korea, they're trembling with aftershocks because of the rare 5.4 that caused buildings collapse there the other day. Now, if we go check on the, well, hello, one day, whew, there is a lot of activity on the San Andreas. I'm telling you, something is about to go here. Heads up. Volcano activity. Let's get along. Popocatapetl, the largest eruption today on Turkey Day. Gobble, gobble. Boom. Registering since 2013, an erupt event was registered by both the Lamacas and the Atazomi Station. Gorgeous picture coming there. Today on Thanksgiving, Popocatapetl Volcano registered an eruptive event and an exhalation of 1,800 meters, representing its largest activity since 2013. Looky here. There's some Twitter links. Look at this. It's like the Volcano Station. That looks awesome. Why aren't you a volcanologist? So there it is. We got the largest event of a Popoca Tapetl. Now this is close to Mexico City in a, a highly populated area. If this starts erupting in a larger way, that could cause chaos to millions. Heads up, Mexico City. Let's talk about 3200 Phaethon, a three-mile-wide asteroid named after a Greek god who almost destroyed Earth, will brush quite close to our planet. Have you heard about this? On December 17th, <coughs> the asteroid is half the size of Chicksa Club, the rock that wiped out the dinos. This is a big rock, guys. I'll leave you links. I have some better... Uh, the object, which NASA had previously described as potentially hazardous asteroid, will pass 6.4 million miles, just 10.3 million kilometers from Earth. Now, this is a unique rock, uh, ladies and gentlemen. If you are uh, with the same electric universe background that I have and under the same belief that these objects are caused by planetary bodies in close proximity... Uh, and plasma discharge events actually blowing surface of terrestrial bodies into space, forming all the asteroids and comets we see today. Some of them have electric potentials different than the surrounding environments, and they cause plasma glows, <coughs> ion tails, and the other things that we call comets. Now, this particular rock here, 3200 Phaethon, displays both asteroidal and cometary uh, phenomena. So, massive three mile wide Christmas asteroid to practically graze Earth next month. The space rock dubbed 3200 Phaethon after Greek god will come quite close to Earth on December 17th. Russian astronomers have been tracking the asteroid's path. Well, so is Diamond. And I have the file 3200 Phaethon orbit JPEG here. It brings it near Marte Tierra. Then, well, let's say Venus, Earth, and Mars, and Mercury here, and right in by the Sun, and the Nova Vitale. So, this guy is pretty substantial, and we might see some electrical activity. This could be a fireworks display for our Christmas times, and we're not talking the kinds that you buy at Walmart. We're talking about the celestial type that the ancients drew on caves and other cliffs. We've seen a lot of fireballs entering the atmosphere recently. And let's just hope this three-mile-wide fireball doesn't get any crazy ideas. Now, guys, 3200 Phaethon, if you come to the Wikipedia here, 
which I'll leave you links to, was discovered in 1983 while searching infrared astronomical satellite data for moving objects. And what they have concluded is that this is the main body of the Geminids. Shortly after its discovery, Fred Whipple observed that the orbital elements of 1983 TB, which is 3200 Phaethon, has a new name. I know it's confusing. Isn't it crazy? They showed a virtual coincident with the mean orbital elements of 19 Geminid meteors photographed with the Super Schmidt meteor cameras. In other words, 3200 Phaethon is the long-sought parent body of the Geminid meteors of mid-December. It may have been a much larger body that caused cosmic catastrophe at one time on Earth. But didn't had nothing to do with the dinosaurs. This just is an awesome picture and they're using it. Because it's awesome. Too much antimatter is hitting Earth and scientists aren't sure why. This is coming out just this is coming out tomorrow. That's how amazing this channel is. We actually went into the future, found this news, and brought it back to the past to give it to you today. Too much antimatter is hitting Earth, and scientists aren't sure why. Well, lightning bolts are churning out antimatter all over the planet. <laughs> Maybe that's why, folks. Maybe I should comment in their article. Record ice. They're cutting off the graph in October because they don't want to see what's really happening. That's what's happening. The entire northern hemisphere above 45 degrees has over 70% white, including all sea ice. And now the snow is penetrating towards the lower latitudes, and it's even got penetrating into North America here. I know because by the time December hits, this entire area is going to be white here. We're talking record snow and record albedo. We have already had that temperature anomaly in northern Siberia where they got to minus 50 this fall. How cold will they get in the winter? It's a heads up. Popocatapetl, we've had that increased cosmic ray flux over the last 48 hours. Boom! Be safe, everybody.